we got involved with uh, oh so many courses that had to do with music and Shakespeare, and we met the professors. And the more involved we got with the lectures, the more, I guess, we fell in love with ASU. We made friends with some of the professors and started attending their lectures with their permissions. And uh, slowly but surely uh, continued our relationship with, with ASU. One of the professors asked me one night, um, or would I write a textbook? Because I had been in global commodity trading all my life. So um, one thing led to another, and the next thing I knew, um, they asked me to join it. And uh, we um, were interested in teaching seven different things, and I held up the business literacy side of it. I think there's a cute little addition to that, though. They asked him, uh, well, what would you like for a salary? And Herb said, well, I, I really don't want a salary because if you gave it to me, I would just give it back to ASU. And I've said this before, so there may be people who have said, oh, Lord, don't say it again. But I felt this sense that ASU was embracing me or I was embracing ASU, but it was a very good feeling. They sort, of, good. They sort of adopted us, right? Yeah. Yes, we've been adopted and we're glad to be there. We've really, we've been very fortunate that uh, a number of groups have formed boards and uh, right. uh, other uh, activities with us. But the main one I think that we really are very much involved in is the Institute of Human Origins. We've both been on this board for quite a long time. And uh, it has been a marvelous experience of of uh, helping a outside independent group, the Institute of Human Origins, integrate within the university and the university's tremendous support for, the, for IHO. And I think the wonderful thing about the councils and the boards is, I don't think it's so much what I may offer or not, but it's so much that I know I learn. And I probably could speak both of us in saying that there's you never learn enough. Oh my goodness. There's so much we don't know. Well, I think Pat has been one of our um, idols. So when he wanted to start this program, uh, it's been many a year now. Uh, this was something that we felt we really, really wanted to do. Particularly so many of the um, diverse students in the greater Phoenix and Maricopa County area who never had a chance to go to college and to give them the, the chance to spend <clears throat> two or three weeks on the campus before their, their freshman year and, uh, and be embedded with some faculty and with students and what dormitory life is like and, and all facets of the university we thought was really, really crucial to their success. I, I think it's so important also to not only bring in the best of faculty, but to retain them and keep their interest. This program and others, which ASU has done, has done a fabulous job of attracting some of the best in the field. Right. Uh, and so we give our students, I think, real opportunities with the top people in whichever field it is. The idea of a paid internship is very much a part of uh, Dean Kenny's thinking about the future. And so I think that's one thing. Uh, many students can't find jobs, but if they can get a step up into a paid internship somewhere, I think that's important. I really see the Roskin Great Hall being the focal point, the nexus of all students and faculty. That as you spend your four years as an undergraduate or a graduate student, at some point, you do pass through that hall. And I'm hoping that that will have great meaning for students, whatever they do in the future, and to sustain all through their lives a sense of curiosity and, uh, and learning. <laughs>